I have never seen these 13 youngsters look less joyful. <laughs> Are you guys nervous? Yeah, I'm giving you all a big collective hug here, okay? It's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, you guys are the best. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is a day that might be characterized a little bit by the word bittersweet. There's a lot of sweet, a little bit of bitterness, and part of that is hope. Eighth grade is here and gone, and... You're going to graduate, and you're going to leave the little safe safety net of Trinity and face the school that you go to out there in the big world. But I want to remind you of something. God's grace goes with you. Today is a day that is full of this mixture of hellos and goodbyes. We had, uh, eight, we had a preschool graduation on Thursday of this week, and uh, I opened with prayer, and I stood there and looked out at these parents sitting there thinking, wow, that was me about 15 years ago. And then I was your parents here just a few years ago, and as a pastor, I always feel like a proud dad on a day like today, when even though you're not my kids biologically, you're my kids, and I'm so proud of you all. But I remember so well those days of preschool and then taking my, first of all, son, because he was the older of the two, off to kindergarten and seeing him go and swallowing that lump in my throat. The big deal, big day. And he looked really nervous at me and said, Dad, um, you're not going to, like, kiss me or anything, are you? <laughs> I said, well, not in front of everybody, but boy, I sure smooched him up in private. It was a big day. And then, boom, it was eighth grade graduation, and then high school graduation, and so it goes. A child goes off to school, a child goes away to college, a child graduates and goes off to the first job, a child leaves home, a child gets married. A friend moves away, someone retires, a change in life. That can be described as bittersweet. There's a little bit of bitterness there, but there's a lot of sweet too. And then there are those goodbyes in life that are just plain bitter. Getting fired from a job you love having someone reject you, maybe someone that you loved with all your heart, and maybe even a marriage of long standing ends in divorce. Or how about the finality of death? Someone you love dies. And they leave you, at least in an earthly sense, and the pain is very deep, it doesn't really matter how old the person is. You're never ready for that moment. But it's especially shocking when you face an untimely death. A young soldier goes off to war and is killed and leaves behind a wife and a child. A teenager dies in a car accident just a week before prom. A cancer diagnosis claims a life far too young. And the most difficult goodbyes are those we least expect. And it seems like no good can come from this. Okay, we're facing today a goodbye. I'm not talking about the eighth graders from Trinity, although I am. I'm talking about Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. That's where we find ourselves in this 
Oddly enough, this far after Easter, we're back on Holy Week. We're back in the upper room. Jesus is talking to his disciples, preparing them for his departure. And remember that he spoke about this departure with Moses and Elijah up on the Mount of Transfiguration. It's kind of a curious thing that it tells us that's what he was talking to them about. And he told his disciples openly what was going to happen to him And to them, he said, the Son of Man is going to go up to Jerusalem, and he will be handed over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he will be crucified. The Gospels say he spoke very plainly about this to them. He was leaving them. He was going away. And their hearts were troubled. And that's the context of last week's gospel where Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, so on and so forth. Their hearts were upset, and they didn't know what kind of a departure this might be. A senseless tragedy. Our Lord having his life taken from us, and our Lord being taken from us. They didn't know that the empty tomb awaited them yet. They didn't know how it was all going to work out. They didn't know the joy that lay ahead of them. And so Jesus gives them a gift in our text. He hands them a gospel promise. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. If you've ever lost a parent, you know the depth of that pain. And if you have lost both your parents, I don't care how old or young you are, if you've lost both your parents, there is that sense of, I'm an orphan now. And that pain goes deep. My mom was orphaned at a young age at the time of the Depression. Nobody needed an extra mouth to feed. Reminded me very much of the story of Little Orphan Annie. I recently watched the remake of the musical Annie, the one with Carol Burnett as Miss Hannity. It was so funny. If you haven't seen that, or if you haven't seen it for years, you've got to check that out again. That's so excellent. But what's more hopeless than Annie's plight? She sings, It's a Hard Knock Life for Us. And it was a hard knock life. No family, no tenderness, no concern, no one to tuck her in at night. She was the one tucking in the other orphans. No one to give her Christmas gifts. But then the story changes when, get this, now remember, this is the Depression, this is 1932, billionaire Daddy Warbucks takes her in, into his heart, into his home, and adopts her. That is a true rags-to-riches story. Not unlike our story, because you see, we are orphans, cut off from our Father by the sin that would estrange us from Him. Think about what a bitter departure it must have been for Adam and Eve when they were removed from the garden and they couldn't enter again. The cherubim were placed there with the flaming swords to keep them from coming back. And it wasn't just so much that they were leaving this paradise, this this beautiful garden, but they were leaving the fellowship with God. They walked with God in the garden. And ever since then, we have been outside looking in. Our sinfulness estranges us from our Creator. Because of our sin, we are as good as dead to Him apart from Christ. The worst part is that every time we choose to sin, you know what we're saying? to our Father in heaven. We're saying, hey, Dad, I wish you were dead. That's what our sin tells our Father. I wish you were dead. We need repentance. And of course, we need forgiveness. 
thank God that Jesus came to deliver us from the orphanage of our sin, from our hard knock life of suffering and death. And he brings us to the mansions he has prepared for us. He is preparing a home in heaven for you right now. And he wants you to know the way to claim it. And again, he told us last week in the gospel, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. He comes to bring us comfort even now with that word of comfort in the promise of his word. And he promises that he will not leave us as orphans, but that he will send the Spirit, the Comforter. That word is translated a number of ways. In the ESV, I think it says helper. In another translation, it says comforter. Another translation calls it the paraclete, the one who comes alongside us, the one who fights our battles not only with us, but for us. The one who quite literally has our backs. And by his grace alone, we face whatever comes in this world as his children. So, no, they don't remain orphans forever. Although the Lord was going away for a time, he promised them hope and blessing even in his departure. Ten days, or excuse me, 40 days after the resurrection was the ascension to the right hand of the Father, where he reigns over all creation. And ten days after that was Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And in this departure that is quickly coming, the world sees him no longer, but he promises us Something of what Winston Churchill called a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. And that is this. Jesus is going, but Jesus is staying. He won't be seen, but he will be seen. He's dying, but he'll live again. And he promises us, us today, because I live, you shall live also. You see, our resurrection awaits us at the last day. He promises that this isn't the end. He'll return. He'll come again. This isn't the end. Even though there are plenty of times in this life when we feel like orphans, we feel like our back's against the wall, we feel alone in this world, we don't know what we should do, and sometimes maybe we even feel a little bit like God is far away from us or he doesn't know what we're going through, and we might even wonder if he cares about our suffering. And maybe especially when we say some of those bittersweet or even bitter goodbyes. But the good news for us as Christians is that we don't have to say goodbye. With Christ, there is no forever goodbye. Only see you later. There's a German word, phrase, Auf Wiedersehen. You've probably heard it before. We usually translate it goodbye. But it literally means until we see each other again. So, Trinity graduates, <laughs> as you walk out those doors, it's not over. And you always have a home there and here and here in all our hearts. You always have a home in your Heavenly Father's heart, that's for sure. But the best part of it all is that when friendships are made based on the gospel of Jesus Christ, when friendships are made in Christ, even though we come and go in each other's lives, and some of you may not see each other again for some time, hopefully not too long, but when our faith is in Christ, we'll be together forever in heaven. And that makes everything okay. Christian friendships 
last for eternity. And so we look forward, even though we say goodbye, sometimes through tears in this life, we look forward to that reunion in heaven. We remember that God doesn't forsake us because he already forsook Christ on the cross for us. And no matter where you go or what you do, no matter how many times you screw up and make wrong choices, your sins will never make your Father hate you. He's already poured out his wrath against sin on his Son on the cross. And now he stands with open arms, always, always, always ready to welcome you back in love, to welcome you into his loving embrace, to welcome you to your eternal home in Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.